Hey guys, Techie HD here again, Aditya, with another video. And I know it's been a super long time since I've filmed a YouTube video, um, but this was one of those kinds of videos that I thought would be fun and exciting. Uh, and so I just thought I would film it and, and put something together up for you guys. Um, so kind of like the title suggests, I bought a new car. Um, for those of you who've watched my previous car video on my channel, um, I think I shot it a little over, around about a year and a half ago. Uh, and that was with my uh, 2017 Audi A4 B9. Uh, that was a super cool car. I absolutely love that car. Um, it's actually funny. I think I'm standing in the exact spot where I closed the deal with the person I sold it to. Um, just because this is a place that's close-ish to my house and it was easy for them to take a look at the car. Um, but yeah, I bought something new. I bought something um, a lot more powerful. Uh, and here it is. All right, guys, so here it is. This is a 2011 W204 Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG sedan. Uh, and I know this comes as kind of a shocker for you guys, especially because my channel is called Tech Geek HD. Uh, this is probably one of those cars that you could get that is furthest away from being technologically advanced. I guess for a time, it's time it had a whole bunch of stuff, but it's not one of those cars that in the modern era today uh, comes across as the kind of car that someone like me would like. But I think one of the things that a lot of people forget about me is uh, that there's two sides to me. One is the tech guy that you guys have come to know uh, and watch on YouTube, and the other is the car guy. And so when I get questions from people like, hey, why didn't you buy a Tesla, a Model 3, a Model 3 Performance? Um, my answer to that is I think those are really cool cars and I think that they are uh, the tech guy in me who likes technology and how it progresses uh, really, really likes those cars a lot. But the car guy in me doesn't. Um, I feel like they're very antiseptic and they lack a soul. Uh, and now that's nothing, you know, I really don't want people uh, who are watching this who are Tesla owners to feel like I'm personally attacking you. I'm absolutely not. I totally get the appeal and I think they're really cool cars. If I was to have a second car, it would most likely be a model. Uh, three or a Model S, um, but I think for me, I need a car with a sound, I need a car with a soul, uh, and I think that a soul of a car comes from its engine and its um, transmission and its character that those mechanical components and the connection with the car uh, make you feel like. Uh, and so this car seemed to be the perfect car for me. For a really long time, I was looking for uh, a 2018 Alfa Romeo uh, Julia Quadrifoglio, and I think that that's a car that I uh, am still absolutely in love with and I'd love to own at some point. But uh, my buddy actually bought a Stelvio Quadrifoglio uh, about two months ago from the time of me filming this video, and that car has been in the shop for uh, almost 50% of the time of his ownership, which really sucks because he's making a, a pretty hefty payment on that car and not being able to enjoy it. And that's something that I just don't think I'm in the financial position to do and just not something that I want to do. And so I was able to find this, a German car. I love German cars. And it's funny to think that I'm comparing uh, a German car to something else and the German car uh, wins out in terms of reliability. But the W204 platform and this engine um, has been really reliable. This is the M156 engine. It is a 6.2 liter uh, V8 and has twice the cylinders of my last car and nearly three times, actually over three times the displacement of my last car. So we went from a two liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine to a naturally aspirated 6.2 liter V8. Now the thing that I think is uh, special and unique and significant to this particular example uh, of this car and the reason that I think was really, really sort of very apparent to me that this is the example that I would buy um, is that this is a one owner car. Now this specific example is a 2011 uh, model uh, and so it's a little bit after the head bolt issue was corrected which is great but the original W204 generation of this car came out back, I believe, in 2007, uh, which was a long enough time ago that it's kind of hard to think that someone would keep this car for that long. Um, but my particular example here, uh, again, was a 2011 car, had a single owner. He was an 80-year-old man who drove this car approximately 1,200 miles a year from new. And I know that sounds kind of crazy to think that someone would own a car like this and only drive it 1,200 miles a year, and yeah, you heard that correct. 1,200 miles a year. I know people who do over that per month. Uh, and so I bought this car uh, right now in, what is it, August? I bought it a couple days. I actually bought it on July the 31st um, for, uh, I'm gonna go into the pricing of this car maybe in another video, but with 12,000 original miles on the car. 
Now, funnily enough, in the couple of weeks that I've owned this car, however, uh, just because of how much uh, enjoyment it brings me, it's a super, super fun car to drive. Uh, you'll notice if I look at the actual mileage, I've put on uh, about 1,200 miles in the last couple of days of owning. It's actually probably a little bit less because I think I, uh, when I finally ended up closing the deal and purchasing the car, it was up to about 12,200. Uh, but so about 1,000 miles um, in... I believe I've owned the car for a little bit under two weeks now, which is kind of hilarious to think that that kind of mileage is what someone put on it per year. Uh, and that's kind of what made this car particularly special to me, uh, was just that it was such a clean example and not the kind of car that you would find, uh, you know, that had four or five owners and people had abused it, it had, you know, been through an accident, had a salvage title. This is a clean title car. Uh, it was in such great shape that when I bought it, the rear seats had never been sat in, and I actually was able to peel the plastic off of the seatbelt buckles, uh, for original from factory, off by myself. Now, probably one of the greatest things about this engine, the M156, is the way that it sounds. This is the non-turbo uh, version of this motor. It is fully naturally aspirated, and Mercedes has been putting this on a lot of cars, especially uh, all of their higher performance, higher end AMG models. Uh, of course, this is a hand-built motor, which is uh, which makes it all the more special. This is not just some random mass-produced engine. Um, but it really does have a sense of character. E each engine was specifically crafted by someone in a Falterbach when they were building this car. Um, and there's been a lot of love and time, research, engineering, uh, and effort put into building something so wonderful. And one of the side effects of having a car like this that has this wonderful naturally aspirated engine uh, with all of this power is that it actually sounds amazing. Now, I think my Audi sounded pretty good. I'd put some work into putting in a downpipe uh, and a full AWE touring exhaust system on it, but I think that there's very little that compares uh, these cars in terms of the kind of audio response that they produce. I'm going to start up the car, give it a couple of revs, uh, but I think one of the prerequisites I wanted to put out in this video is that I'm the kind of person who likes to modify their car. I haven't done too much work to this car yet. The only modification that it's had, and it does affect the sound a little bit, is uh, I deleted the secondary catalytic converters. Now this car has four catalytic converters, a set of primaries and a set of secondaries. Uh, the O2 sensor actually comes out right after the primary catalytic converters and doesn't actually measure the output after the secondary cats, and so it makes it very easy to take those out without any risk of getting a check engine light or having to tune the car in any way. Uh, and what it does is it actually really reduces the amount of restriction that those catalytic converters provide. And while it keeps the sound signature pretty much the same, it just gives it a little bit more volume, uh, amplifies it, and just kind of extends um, the audio response that you can ex uh, expect to hear out of the back of this car. Now, the car is already warm. I've driven it around a little bit today. I drove to work, drove back, uh, and so it isn't going to be a, a cold start, although I may have a clip of it that I'll put in this video somewhere. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just going to start it up, give it a couple revs, and uh, let you guys hear what it sounds like. So as you guys were probably able to hear from that clip, the car does actually sound pretty damn mean. Uh, and it's one of those things that I absolutely love about it. There's very few cars that have given me this sort of uh, response from the exhaust system, from the engine, uh, especially, that sound like this and have this type of response. And it's just something that I absolutely love and cannot get enough of. Uh, the car has absolutely terrible, terrible gas mileage. It's probably the worst performing gas guzzler car I have ever driven in my entire life. Uh, and I love every single moment of it. And gas isn't cheap up here in Washington where I live. Um, the car has been averaging, I believe, about 14.3 miles per gallon. Typically, every time I take it out, if I'm driving it in the city, I get no more than 11 to 12. Uh, and if I'm on the highway, uh, today I was driving it pretty... Um, 
cautiously and not driving it like a total hooligan um, to work and, and back. And I think I got about 18, 18 and a half, which is actually doing pretty well considering the size of the displacement of this engine. Now, a lot of people have already asked me why I didn't just buy a slightly higher mileage facelift version of this car, and I think that uh, that's been a little bit of an internal struggle as well from when I picked it up. The front of this car uh, looks a little bit tame as compared to the facelift version, and I think the biggest changes uh, on that car are in the interior that I think looks a lot better on the newer car. But I have to say the look of this car has been growing on me. I think probably my favorite angle of the car is the rear three quarter that we were looking at a second ago. But this front is a really, really timeless, um, brawny, angry look to the car that I just absolutely love. There's very few cars, again, that I think that could be, you know, that are this old and I believe still look this good and this fresh to the day. Um, this, of course, is my favorite angle of the car. Uh, right down here, looking at it with those quad tail pipes. I think one of the things that I really enjoy about the car as well is the fact that it is kind of a sleeper. I think when most people see this car coming on the highway, um, you know, far enough behind them, they think it's just another C300, just a tame Mercedes that some, uh, you know, some kid borrowed from their dad, but then they hear me open it up, open up the throttle a little bit and punch it, and it absolutely flies. And this is one of those cars that I don't think I would consider quick. It's not a modern car. The transmission doesn't have the kind of, um, you know, compute capability to be able to quickly drop down a gear and, and just kind of go. Uh, I tend to drive it in manual mode a lot of the time because I really like shifting with the paddles. And the transmission is actually not bad. This is one of the later models of this year. It's actually just right before the facelift. And while I believe that there wasn't any crazy work done to the transmission throughout the entire process, this is one of the cars that had uh, the TCU update from factory before it shipped. Uh, and so it actually does perform pretty quick in manual mode. Uh, of course, it isn't as quick as the DSG in my Audi. Uh, but again, this car is uh, quite a few years older than that. Just a quick look at the interior. I think this is one of those things that's uh, taking some time to grow on me, but I'm finally starting to feel and understand uh, why and how everything was put together. Everything's been built super, super well. All the materials feel great. The steering wheel is one of those things that I absolutely love. Uh, it has a flat bottom. I've driven this generation of, of uh, three series before. I've actually driven a, I believe it was a C300, CDI or something of that nature. It's been a few years since I last drove uh, a C-Class because I wasn't necessarily a big fan of just the standard car. Uh, the AMG, however, I think has a lot of nice touch points, as I'm sure that the rest of the other models uh, in the range do. I think probably the biggest thing that irks me is just I'm not a big fan of wood uh, on the inside of cars, at least when done like this. I think newer cars, like some of the newer Volvos, have some really nice uh, textured wood that I do like. This is very, very old man wood spec, and of course, you know, the person who bought this car, who owned it before me, he was 80 years old, that means when he bought it, he was what was he, 79, or, or my bad, 71. Uh, for a 71 year old to be driving a car like this, I think is already kind of crazy, but so I'll give him the wood. I think what I'm gonna be doing is swapping out all the interior trim uh, for the factory Mercedes-Benz carbon fiber. I'm sure I'm gonna be able to so source it from uh, Mercedes-Benz GmbH. Um, I'm the kind of person who doesn't like to wrap internal components. Uh, in my Audi, uh, back when I had it, um, I had uh, ordered the original carbon fiber components from uh, Wolfsburg to have that done and so I think I'm gonna be doing the same thing here as far as other modifications are concerned I'm not necessarily sure of exactly what I want to do it's a really str uh, strange thing to have to deal with a car like this where it's really really beautiful from the factory as is there's a lot of things that I really love about this car and there's not a ton that I want to change but I'm also of the opinion that you know modifying your car is something that I just enjoy doing uh, I think it adds a level of personality and um, uniqueness to the car that you know separates it from every other C63 on the road uh, and I'm fortunate to live in an area that has a lot of nice cars so I really do want to help um, you know figure out what I want to do to make this my own uh, as far as I'm concerned at the moment the car looks great I really like the five spoke AMG wheels probably what I'm gonna do is uh, my guess is that that's probably going to be the next upgrade uh, is switching to a nice pair of like polished uh, one or two piece wheels or maybe a two tone three piece wheel if I can find an affordable one. If people have any recommendations, I'd love to hear. Uh, I, of course, I'm a huge, huge HRE fan. Those are the wheels I had on my Audi and I still actually have those wheels. 
the rears would fit on this car. Uh, the car has a staggered setup, of course, uh, because it is rear wheel drive. Uh, and so unfortunately, the front wheels won't fit on this. Um, it's kind of funny because those are exactly the same bolt pattern and the same center bore, except uh, they're just too wide. Those are nine and a half, and I believe I have eight and a half uh, on the front in this car. Any wider and it would be, uh, you know, it would, it would stick out. And those wheels are a little bit bigger, so I run the risk of uh, hitting the fender when I lower the car onto those wheels. So a new set is definitely incoming at some point. Uh, I'm still unsure of what exactly I want to get. Uh, if any, again, if anyone has any recommendations, if you happen to be selling a wheel, this car again has a center bore, I believe of 66.5 and a five by 112 millimeter um, bolt pattern. Um, I'm absolutely interested, let me know, drop it in the comments and I'd love to check them out. Um, outside of that, I think I'm just gonna be doing a chrome delete. I'm not a fan of chrome at all. I think that on this car, it actually accents it pretty well, but that's just a matter of personal preference. And so all the badges, all the chrome trim, the grill, everything's gonna be going black with the exception of the exhaust tips that are gonna stay the same. Um, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's very different from the normal tech videos and reviews and things that I make. And I know it's been a really long time since I put out a video. But this was one of those things that was special to me and I wanted to share, and so I thought I'd come out, take the time, and film it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a comment in the section below. If you'd like to follow along with my car, see some pictures that I've taken of it already, and I continue to do so, uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm techiekhd on there as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.